Hello, everybody, and welcome along to Sound and Vision. We're at Detroit, Michigan, Mortar Town, in the midst of a huge amount of regeneration. Everywhere you look downtown, there are new building projects, and Belle Isle has been, well, transformed over the decades that the race has been running on this circuit. Not a typical street track, there's some flowing corners, action areas down at the end of the first straight at the right hand at turn three, into the heavy braking area at turn seven at the end of the strand, with the river on the driver's left around Scott's Fountain, and possibility of a overtake at the beginning, or if you will, the end of the lap, uh, coming into turn one across the start finish line but that's not a dead straight run into that first corner there's been a lot of rain here over the last few months which means that the public areas in this public park of course for the rest of the year are very green and very pleasant indeed a big crowd on hand friday for the free free friday and here on saturday where the imsa weathertech sports car championship is the featured event here on saturday the fountain is running, and that's where we'll be handing the trophies out at the end of the race today. Let's go down to Shea Adam in the pit lane, and the atmosphere building very nicely, Shea. I am pumped up right now, John. Uh, the last four cars in line are being moved right now by their mechanics to make it so that they can get through the RFID reader at the pit exit. That's special for the Michelin tires, so Michelin know who is on what. They have to pass through it when they leave the pit lane after every pit stop. And we've got both of the Penske's, the 55 Acura, the 31 Whalen Engineering Cadillac, and now the five Mustang Sampling Cadillac. They have all been moved into position. For everybody else, it's not going to be a tight fit. For those five, it would have been. The most famous, the most famous words in motorsport in the background there is the engines have indeed been fired up and we are ready to go racing. 23 cars. The formalities now completed. And we welcome those of you here at the track back to the global broadcast on IMSA Radio and IMSA TV. Thanks to Tony Laporta for the formalities and the rest of the IMSA team who have uh, run that down on pit lane with sparkling accuracy as ever. The Chevrolet Corvette safety car is about to pull out. That hasn't had to go through the RFID chip reader, which is at the end of the pit lane, having been reinstalled after the IndyCar qualifying. No spoilers for that, particularly for those of you in the UK who are still watching that on Sky Sports F1 being uh, replayed slightly uh, behind time there. Rolling off on the first of a couple of formation laps here, Jeremy Shaw is alongside me. Our Porsche keys to the race, Jeremy. Track position, very important on any street circuit, and this is no, this is uh, no exception. It, it isn't, uh, and this is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we've got some fast cars at the front, we've got some fast cars uh, close behind as well, and this is anybody's race now, and everyone's going to be keeping an eye on the sky, but also going to be watching their competitors around them as well. Uh, tyres, and the tyres. Do we even take tyres here? This is not a particularly abrasive circuit. You don't get what you, you hear the teams talking about, tyre de tire degradation. And the Michelins have been outstanding here. What Pablo Montoya said in the... Uh, Paul position interview with Shea Adam yesterday. You can't kill these tyres, they just keep coming back for more. There is a slight performance advantage with a new tyre. Is it enough to risk changing the tyres on pit lane? Yeah, tricky one. Yeah, there's so many decisions the teams are going to have to make during this short race. Uh, hopefully, one picks off the, for the DPI cars, but it's a bit too much. So, if it is all green, if it's a fast pace, have to see that's another factor, of course. Do you, uh, if the, these cars can generally do about 45 minutes or so on a, on a full tank of fuel plus of course we have the uh, the two pace laps as well so you know it's going to be uh, it's going to be marginal if if there isn't a full course caution it will be marginal to get to the end on just one pit stop for the prototypes dp uh, dt uh, gtds no problem but it's not even a second full tank of fuel is it let's no, be honest for no, the gt no, exactly right 
Uh, so, we, you know, it, there's certainly a, a lot of decisions that are going to have to be made. And the drivers are going to have to do their parts, but so are the engineers on the pit lane as well. And, and that makes GT Daytona actually quite interesting. Do you just go as long as you can into the race and then splash at the end of the race? Or do you go just far enough to use enough fuel to get enough in to get you to the end and take your pit stop really early and then say, right, I'll take my chances now, I can fight, but if I go full course yellow, I'm going to make up some positions because I've already done my pit stop. Yeah, if you've already done your pit stop, that's the key because the pits are closed uh, when they have a full course caution. So if the pits are closed and you've already made your pit stop, as long as you're still on the lead lap, then when everybody else comes onto pit lane, you're going to cycle around on the racetrack and you're going to come out ahead of the guys who have already uh, who have not yet made their stop. So you know, there's so many uh, factors to play out here. Uh, and yeah, I was talking to some of the teams, uh, yeah, for example, the G one of the GDC cars with Michel Goitberg and Tristan Vautier. Vautier, particularly around here, is a good bit faster than Misha. Uh, was uh, uh, and that there indeed was a, a chance that they might qu qualify Tristan. If he could qualify at the front and get you know, hand over the car to Misha Goitberg in a really good position, then it's going to be tough for the other guys to get around Misha. That was certainly something they were considering. Unfortunately, Misha had a crash yesterday yeah. during the uh, one of the practice sessions. That cost him quite a bit of track time, and he's not really quite up to speed yet. So they, f they, they went back to their original plan, but certainly that was one thing that the team was considering. Misha did get a little bit of extra race because he uh, race time because track time because he was racing a tier two in the Trans Am I noticed he was coming into the pit lane when I was walking back out again that was quite He'll race anything smart. That guy. well yeah but he races he, he races in Trans Am he races in F1600 as well on, on the uh, on the east coast he's, he's a racer he's, I love it so in just over 100 minutes time what will we be talking about in Michelin post race tech where will be the turning point of the race what will be the point uh, arising I'm not sure but we'll find out shortly the hashtag is Michelin PRT to at IMSA Radio. If you want to get in touch with us, we'll keep an eye on that as much as we can. But the cars are coming into their side-by-side -side formation. The lights are out on the Corvette safety car. And leading them to the line will be our Paul Sitter for the Chevrolet Sports Car Classic. Juan Montoya with Elio Castro Nevis. His teammate, it's the six and seven Acura Team Penske DBIs on the front row. Split second row, the 55 Jonathan Bomarino, the dark red Mazda, almost looks black sometimes in the sunlight. And alongside that, the unmistakable red, very bright red and white of Pipo Durrani in the wheel engineering, engineering 31 Cadillac. Row three, two Cadillacs, Joao Barbosa in the dark grey, number five. Teammate to the 31, and then the gloss black, number 10, in the sixth position, Brinker van der Zander. In GTD, Porsche from two Acuras, from two Lexus, two beautiful rows of cars. It's a direct start. There's no split between the two different classes and the two Penske's come to the line. The green flag is in hand on the start. It's down to my left beyond the Chevrolet Bridge. One hour and 40 minutes, 100 minutes. Oh, they've got really, really early. They've jumped away. That's a fantastic start. The Mazda down the inside. He's up in the second. Pomerino, fantastic start. Squeezed into a gap that was only just a Mazda side. And Paul Miller's gone around. The Paul Miller's gone around with the WeatherTech car, I think it was. Cooper, yeah, Ryan Hardwick and Cooper McNeil into the barriers at turn one. So that will bring out a full course caution very early. The Paul Miller car defending series champions, that car. But what a start by Bonarino, went through the gap on the right hand side as they came with the green flag. That must have been an inch either side wider than the Mazda and followed through then into fourth position by people and into third position rather by people to Rani in the red white 31 but we are under full course yellow and we will see that Corvette back out on the track to lead the cars around well what a start by Bomarito knew he had to do it early and did exactly that yeah and I'm sure Eric Castro probably won't be particularly happy with his teammate there because he kind of uh, he just left him for dead at the start and Elio wasn't expecting to clearly to go so soon uh, Bomarito, he was ready for anything, and he just nailed the throttle as soon as he saw uh, Pablo Montoya do that, and he was able to sneak alongside him. And then a really opportunist move at turn one by Pipo Durrani in the Cadillac to squeeze through into third place. So uh, poor old Adrian Castro Neves has now got a lot of work to do. A three-time winner here in the past in uh, 
in 2000, 2001 and 2014 for Team Penske in the IndyCars, but he's got some work to do now. Absolutely brilliant start by Bomarito and by Durrani. Well, you don't have to give any of those two young charges a second <laughs> invitation. It was quite a heavy hit uh, in the rear, the right rear of the 63 Ferrari, which then pitched him sideways into the wall. Oh, no, it was the other way around. So it was Cooper that went into Ryan Hardwick there. I thought Cooper had been turned around from the back. In fact, that was not the case. Hardwick still moving and gets into the pits right in front of the IMSA broadcast booth. Shea Adam is looking at a championship winning car from last year that's looking a little bit pre-loved. Mm, ever since they put the blue on it, John, it hasn't had much good luck at all for the Paul Miller Racing team. They uh, have taken the right rear tire off. There's quite a bit of damage to that portion of the car. They've got the good old Bondo tape out, though, and they're going to try and piece it back together for Ryan Hardwick, a jet ski racing champion, who is quite looking forward to the opportunity to perhaps splash in the fountain here at Belle Isle. But uh, the tire has some marks on it as if it was actually rubbing up against the bodywork so this is going to be a little bit more than severe than just trying to fix the bodywork around the back he's going to be missing a lot of downforce on the right rear of this car john i i wouldn't be so convinced that the suspension is all good and he did come in when the pits were closed because we are under full course caution so they can only do emergency service at this point good news is that cooper mcneil is out of the 63 car good news that he's not hurt so Cooper going into the first corner, just yeah, seemed sure to was understeer thinking. into the right rear he of just, the Lamborghini. He, he there, was, there was enough room, wasn't there? He was there, carrying way side? too much speed. Yeah. I mean, he, there, were, there were three cars be, between them uh, at, the, at the start, and all of a sudden there he is, unfortunately, just trying to carry too much speed. They got down the inside of, of uh, who was that? I think it was John Potter. Uh, who'd left the door, you know, left the door open, so uh, Cooper squeezed through there, but he was just carrying too much speed when he got to the apex, and and uh, you, you've got to feel for both of them. It's been a really frustrating weekend for this WeatherTech team. They had a, a clutch problem yesterday in the second practice session, uh, and they, there wasn't enough time to change the clutch be, be, before qualifying, so they just kind of had to do the best they could in a qualifying session. As uh, Tony Vilando is not even going to get a chance, I don't think, to drive perhaps even this afternoon, and that's disappointing for him. So uh, that means he's, uh, he's never raced here still. Yeah, still raced, isn't Yes, yeah, true. Yeah, the clutch still lift for, was for, above 5,000. I mean, Ryan Hardwick, he's really working super hard. Uh, new to the to this level of racing. He's done a year in the Lamborghini Super Trofeo, but t chatting to him this morning, you know, this is a completely different car uh, to the Lamborghini Super Trofeo series. Yes, it's still a Lamborghini, and yes, it's still GT3 based, but uh, this is a very different animal indeed, but he's he's working hard, he's doing all the sim work, he's training super hard in and out of the car is Ryan Hardwick, and for, to have uh, uh, you know, his, uh, his race uh, may maybe not ended, but certainly uh, brought to a uh, a bit of a, 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 a an early yeah, end. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It looks like it. Um, That's a shame. I think he's dropped off the lead lap, hasn't he? he yes, has, he yeah. has. He, he's still in the bits, isn't he, I think. Uh, or has he gone out? Oh, he's gone out. Oh, he might be. He might be okay. He might be still on the lead lap. Uh, okay, he might be still on the lead lap in GTD, but I'm not sure about. It. Let's see when I he comes. See where he, where when he, he comes out. back around, and. We're live around the world from was track that, side. That was him, there, that was him whizzing yeah, so by us there. So he's so, on the lead lap. Okay. Live around the world on IMSA Radio and IMSA TV, brought together to bring the, to bring the biggest community of sports car fans in the world together. Fantastic wherever you are. A lot of people watching and listening in France, getting ready for test day at Le Mans tomorrow. And don't forget, the only place that you can pick up live at commentary and coverage from the pit lane and indeed looking at the times in those two four-hour sessions with plenty of IMSA drivers making the trip tonight by the way to the centre of France in the Le Mans 24-hour test day and that's over on our sister channel RS1 Joe Bradley and Johnny Palmer will be anchoring the coverage with uh, technical experts dropping in as well and if you want more details about that go to www.radio-show.co.uk scroll down at the bottom that's where all the schedule information is and that auto converts to your own time zone. So follow the IMSA drivers on their quest for the 24-hour glory at the month this year over on RS1, Mobile One Radio Le Mans, 91.2 FM at the track. And I can't wait to get there on Thursday.
talking to Harry Tuchel about that uh, just about an hour ago, and he was saying he's still pinching himself. You know, he, he finishes the race here as the plan. Hopefully, he'll be at least on the podium. Uh, and then he's going to go straight to the airport here, hop on a plane, gets off the plane in the morning, and, and they're ready to go at Le Mans uh, tomorrow morning. He's, he's still pinching himself. He can't believe it. It's nine, o nine o'clock French time. Uh, that's Private uh, plane, European yeah, time. Good. Nine till one, and then uh, two till six tomorrow. Those two. Green, then. It's ten, uh, ten, not yet. We've still got cars on the circuit, which gives me a chance to say hello to Marion and Sarah Champlain, who have been looking after our needs food-wise for many years in the IMSA paddock. Not here this weekend, not one of the races they come to, but I know they've been tuned in all through the weekend to listening to what's going on. So Marion, Champlain, and the Marion and Sandra, thank you very much indeed for all of your work and uh, thanks for tuning in as well. The good news, if there is any good news, there's caution period and there certainly isn't any for number 63 or it probably is for the 48 actually because he's able now to, to rejoin at the back of the pack. Uh, but um, it's uh, it's good news for the, for the prototypes because this should mean that they are able to get to the end of the race with just the one pit stop. But it will have to be pretty much at that halfway mark if they're not going to have to make a second stop onto the, onto the pit lane. How long can the GTD cars go? An hour and ten? An hour and fifteen? No, yeah, yeah, hour and a bit, certainly. Right. Yeah, hour, yeah, hour and ten or so, yes, that's about right. Okay. Keep an eye on that, then. Uh, we've got another lap or so still under full course yellow, if you're just joining us live here at the raceway on Belle Isle. Quite a long time to get that uh, Porsche uh, Ferrari loaded up, isn't it? Yeah, damage to the left front suspension on that car. Chevrolet Sports Car Classic with still 90 minutes to run. Also, a big hello to Marshall Pruitt. Not with us this weekend. You're both in our thoughts, MP. Hopefully see you soon. Beautiful day to be here at the raceway on Belle Isle. One or two people out in the river just watching on. Uh, however, just north of us, north and west of us, there is a weather front that is looking fairly menacing. I, I'm, I'm going to look on the bright side and say that it will pass to the north of us. So, still just waiting for that 63 car to get completely loaded on. It is now. It is on the back of the truck. Shit, Adam is down at that end of pit lane and can see the hard-working marshals. And thank you to our marshal volunteers, whether they're parking cars, punching tickets, or waving flags, picking up cars, or on the intervention teams, we simply can't go motor racing without all of those volunteers giving up their time. And as a proud ambassador for the British Motorsports Marshals Club, I know exactly how much goes in, work goes in behind the scenes. And also as a FIA license holder, race license holder, I know that uh, my life is in their hands when I'm out there. So thank you very much indeed, ladies and gentlemen, for all your hard work and all the time that you give up so that we can go motor racing, whether we're watching it commentating on it or participating in it. Your efforts are much appreciated. How's it going at turn one, Shea Adam? The good news is that those very hardworking marshals and track service workers have had a lot of practice this weekend, cleaning up cars from turn one and putting them onto flatbeds. Well, more than that we would want them to have normally. So they've been able to get this done in a very quick and efficient manner. The 63 Scuderia Course Ferrari is on the back of the flatbed. Flatbed is now pulling away. That will go through turn one, go through turn two. So the car will actually go through turn two at least once during the race unfortunately and then to make a hard right back into the paddock the safety crew has now made its way off the track as well we should be going back to green here not in the not too distant future but the other thing john because this happened so close to the start of the race the pits should not open Correct. when we go back to green because this should be what's called a quickie yellow uh, and it was indeed called a short yellow came up on the screen uh, in the booth here in the IMSA broadcast centre and the teams will have seen that lights are out in the safety car uh, as a result of that number 48 car will have to do a drive-through penalty for, for servicing the car during a closed pit Okay, that means they are likely to drop off the lead lap. Yeah, they should be able to, to do a drive through and, not, and stay on the lead lap because it's a fairly long lap around here. Uh, so, but it, they'll certainly be uh, way off the back of the pack of everybody else. Well, take a deep breath, everybody, as we head towards a green flag restart here in the Chevrolet Sports Car Classic, live on IMSA Radio and IMSA TV from trackside. 
Our team of Shea, Adam, Jeremy Shaw and me, John Hindorf, looking forward to this action. Oh, well, you know, we barely got two corners and we got plenty of action yeah. on the start. Let's hope for a little more. It was an outstanding start at the front of the field by Mazda and the 31 of people Durrani. Not so good for Cooper McNeil coming into heavy contact with the 48 of Ryan Hardwick and the Lamborghini struggling away. And it's a... That's a replay. And it's a, another restart to come. But this time, Juan Montoya will not have his teammate next to him. Look to our right. He's gone. He's gone again, super early. And that's caught out second and third. And at the moment, it looks like people to run. He's got the best start of the top three, other than the leader, who's pulled out, what, three, four, five cars left. And it's a bit of a defence into turn one for the dark red Mazda going through and taking position at the back of the Cadillacs. Joao Barbosa ahead of Frank van der Zander. Actually, I think he got that done just about the start line, maybe a little bit before. They, they, they stayed in the same order, in fact, to ah, one, but so the van der Zander was trying yeah. to make a move and a, a pretty big save there by, by both of them. But muscling through, Simon Trummer in the bright yellow yeah. GDC Miller Motorsport Cadillac. Three Cadillacs in behind the Second of the Acura team Penske, so Castro Nevis has Barbosa, Trummer, uh, and Van der Zander now down to seventh position. Then the second of the Masters, the number 77 car, but his teammate, Jonathan Bomarino, J Bomb, well, someone's lit the fuse on the 55 car. Big sideways moment under bringing at the end of the strand at turn seven. 63, Cooper McNeil has been assessed a penalty for that accident and the contact with the 48 and a drive-through you might think well why are they doing that the car's on the back of a flatbed well the car could be fixed but also it sends a message to everybody else that that was unacceptable battle for second Durrani down the inside clean move very clean move indeed Jeremy as he came through to turn 12 12 yeah at the end of the infield section and he goes past us now Pipo has been released and he's off after the leader, Juan Montoya. The Cadillac teams worried about the weight and the lack of power there, but that was a clean pass on the master of Jonathan Bomarino by Pipo Tirani. Pipo, one of the drivers, he'll be off to France tomorrow or tonight, should I say. He's driving a Ferrari in that race and a Ferrari in very, very classic. North American Racing Team blue colours for the Ferrari. That's good back a few years. It was a great pass by, uh, by Pipo Durrani. Jonathan Bomarito just didn't get off turn 11 well and, and he left the door open. And uh, down the inside uh, comes Pipo Durrani. A really fine move by Durrani. Great battle going on at the front of GT Daytona. Those are the cars that look a little more straight. Zach Robichon started at the front of the field and Christina Nielsen in second and that's still how they're running at the moment they pulled away just a little bit from Trent Hinman in third then the two Lexus and a drive-through penalty false start for the number 76 McLaren Matt Plum it's not been their weekend as it comes guys he lined up on the wrong side of the grid on the restart I think it must have been the original start probably. yeah that must have been the original start and they talked about that in the drivers meeting for the lead, top three going into turns one and two. There's barely three or four DPI's lengths between them as they go over the bridge and down towards turn three. And it seems as though Elio Castro Nevis's Acura Team Penske car in fourth position is coming alive as well as he's beginning to close the gap to the leading trio. Still an hour and 25 minutes to go. Pit stop to come. Weather closing in, but passing to the north of us, coming in from the west. Yeah, there's one cell in the grass news with us here. Uh, and he's, he was looking at uh, his weather forecast just a little while ago, and uh, the, 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 the radar shows that there's a cell that's moved all the way past us yeah. to the north. Yeah, so you're right on that one, John. Let's hope the next one does the same. Smashing overtake. That was oh, a, and there was a touch yeah. between the 5 and the 10, the two Cadillacs. The Koninka Minolta car got a great run coming to the line, going to the outside at turn one. Yeah. And then on the inside, moving back to the racing line, it looked as though that the number five car just moved across with Joao Barbosa. By the way, I've got to shake your hand. I'll ask you for the finish. That's from me and from Shea. 
that was an extraordinary. I don't think it was the three yard of bricks that you won by. It was magnificent. Well done, young man. So the leaders are just beginning to pull away. He's got a good handshake as well. I like, I like some of the good handshake. Leaders are beginning to pull away. Just about a second, a second and a half to Bomarito. Now already the engineers will be talking to their drivers now that we've got the restart out of the way. The Polar Racing Lamborghini is going again. It came into the pits for fuel and some more tape, but it has not yet served its penalty, I don't think. Uh, Shea Adam will confirm that for me. I, I, I'm pretty certain that has not had a it's penalty yet, the 48. Yes, yes sir. it has. Yes, it came in uh, right uh, after the restart. No, no, but it, it, it took service. service, so you can't take a penalty when well, you take service. service. Correct. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Shea. So what they'll do is they'll stay out for a, another couple of laps and then they'll do their pit stop. There he goes past us now. And that'll be very, very disappointing for those guys. Ryan Hardwick has come up through the Lamborghini Challenge, the with the development series here. We'll see those cars again at Watkins Glen. Always very exciting and uh, a very interesting addition to the Lamborghini races at Watkins Glen. With uh, a big name joining in. Not my announcement to make. I'll leave that. So that's something we'll be talking about in a few weeks, I am sure, after Le Mans, uh, when the entry lists come out. But uh, talk to Christopher Wall from Lamborghini Scuderia Corsa, and very excited about that. Going to have a lot of fun with that one. At the front of GTD, Zach Robichon is doing what Zach Robichon we've seen do many, many times in Porsche Cup races, and he's checking out at the front of the field. Now, here's the drive through for the McLaren for lining up on the wrong side, and that is just a drive-through. 7.20. Park yeah. Place Porsche leading, and Zach Robichon, a study in concentration. Mm. It's a busy track round yeah. here. There are a couple of straights, Jeremy, that you can just sort of relax the shoulders a little bit, but there's a lot going on, even in the GTD cars around here. Yeah, there really is. There's not much room here to make a mistake and, and get away with it, so it is uh, intense concentration required around here. Interesting to me is the, the pace of what Pablo Montoya at the head of the field. Uh, Durrani is absolutely staying with him. In fact, uh, oftentimes it's been Durrani who's got the fastest lap. Uh, the last couple of laps, it was uh, Durrani hits three of the last four laps. Uh, Durrani was the quickest car on the race. Right? This time around, John Bomarito in third position. But uh, Montoya, he's just managing his pace at this stage. He knows it's still fairly tight uh, in terms of making one pit stop. So 123.8 this time around. That was his uh, best lap on the race uh, so far. Uh, but that's uh, some way short of what that car is capable of. And it's certainly capable of running in the... Uh, 21s at, uh, at, uh, at worst, really. Uh, but so he's, he's cutting his pace on, he's managing his speed at the moment uh, and looking after the fuel consumption, trying to save as much fuel as he can and not burn up as much fuel uh, as, uh, as possible in order to make sure he can just make the right end of this race on one pit stop. I'm absolutely intrigued to see what the pit stop strategies are for the Daytona prototypes. And Porsche keys to the race on pit stop strategy. Two tyres, left-hand sides, the other ones that get the hammer round here, but it's not a high degradation circuit, it doesn't work the Michelin rubber that hard. Two tyres side, two tyres winners. Some of the GT teams talking about that. Absolutely, yeah. Lexus almost certainly will go for two. New Michelin's at the back. Michelin's, by the way, welcome back to racing on beautiful Belle Isle. Now, over a decade since uh, Michelin were last here competing as the leaders come to put a lap on Ryan Hardwick in the 48 Lamborghini down towards turn three. Through the doors, Montoya. Second place with an engineer with 31 Cadillac doesn't get the cleanest of runs. Is that an opportunity for Jonathan Bomarino in the 55 as he reaches the Lamborghini coming out of the corner? Lost a little bit last time, I think, that the two cars ahead of him and Bomarino beginning to close in now onto the 
Red, white, wheel and Cadillac ahead. Acura, Cadillac, Mazda. Acura, then three Cadillacs. Eighth position to St. Nunes in the second of the Cadillacs. Ninth and tenth Cadillacs and the Nissan of... Nissan, I should say here, shouldn't I? Uh, of John Bennett is in 11th position. Porsche leads GTD from two Acuras, then the two Lexus, then the Lamborghini of John Potter. Seventh for the Audi of Parker Chase. Then Robbie Forley, by the way, from the back of the grid is working his way up to eighth position. Four positions made up. Ninth is the Mercedes AMG, then the McLaren. And uh, Ryan Hardwick, after the pit stop, is sitting in 11th place. No further laps scored for the 63. <laughs> Tell you what, Ryan Hardwick had a bit of a wake-up call there because he had the train five car. Yeah, they all got bottled up behind him, I think, going through uh, 12 and 13. Now they all whistle past him on the straight before, uh, the brief straight before start finish time. There's a heck of a battle there for a fifth place on back. Six cars together, Mustang Sampling Cadillac from JDC Miller Motorsport Cadillac from the Wayne Taylor Racing Cunningham Minolta car, then the 77 Mazda, then the second of the JDC cars, then Yukos Racing, all in Linerston. I think I heard a little whimper or a scream from <laughs> Ryan Hardwick as he went past us. Did a good job though, he, he really did have his line, that's all you can do. Yeah. All you can do is in mixed racing, you get told if you're not in the fastest class, hold your line and let the quick guys go by. Can't be moving around on the track with us. That great train of 16 PIs coming through. And Robbie Ford has got past number eight car of uh, Parker Chase on that lap. And Gar Robinson, he's staying right with. He's at number 74, Lone Star Racing Mercedes. He's staying right with Parker Chase in the, in the Starworks Audi as well. That's a vertical bridge car. And then he passes us down towards turn 10. The battle is in this huge group of six cars from Joao Barbosa in fifth, then Simon Trummer, Simon Trummer in the end of the car. The sixth position, that's the bright yellow car. The ten of Van der Zander is the glossy black car behind that. Leading trio beginning the close up again. And certainly second and third close up as Mauro Rico has another little look. But Pimo's not being dropped. The Cadillac is not being dropped by the leader. That last time around Montoya turned the fastest lap of the race, 123, uh, excuse me, 122.7. The fastest lap record here set last year by Felipe Nasser in the Cadillac, 121.6. So anyway, I would expect that uh, record to go during this race, but uh, Montoya now, he's been given about the all clear, but he's certainly unleashed himself just a little bit. He pulled away about half a second on that last lap. And it's going to be interesting to see now whether he can stretch out a little more. He, won't, he, he doesn't need to be too far ahead, but he, he, you know, as comfortable a margin as he can have, uh, he, would, uh, he would certainly prefer that. It's gets a little bit darker in the sky. Shea went out with full rain set up today, just in case. Uh, have you stayed on the full rain setup or have you gone intermediate now, Jim? No, no, I'm on, I'm on full slicks. Uh, I took off the full rain setup before the race began in full anticipation of uh, the fire suit getting completely drenched <laughs> in rain. So, uh, it's yeah. It's now, it's your fault. Exactly. No, I'm risking it. I, I'm, I'm willing to uh, take one for the team just to make a little bit of a more interesting race and to be. Uh, to do a PSA, because we do those every now and then. There are tornado sirens that are sounding around the track right now. That is just a test, so don't freak uh, out if you hear something really loud. Do you know, I thought um, there's something ringing in my ears there. I could hear those on the uh, effects coming in, and I wondered what it was. Thank you for that. An hour and 15 minutes still to go. Montoya leads by a full second now to Durrani in second. That's Acura versus Cadillac and Mazda in third position. Another. Well, about a second or so behind in GTD. It is Porsche from Acura by a couple of seconds, and then a second further back, the second of the Acura is Trent Hinman in the 86 car. That's your Cadillac in race updates with Cadillac V Series, because real racers never take time off. And all the top three each set their best laps of the race that time around, lap 14 in the books. It was the fastest lap of the race thus far by Juan Pablo Montour, but Pima Durrani was really responded there, 22.05. Uh, it's actually half a second quicker on that last lap. Yeah. He back for the lead, back for the lead now. And, and he knows the opportunities coming up here. He's got some bank markers to work their way through. And that is going to be what Pipo Durrani is looking for. And also, right behind him also, is Jonathan Bomarito. Coming down to the end of the lap, they flash past us. 
and head across the line and down towards the first corner. And all three cars get past the Turner Motorsport BMW through turn two across the bridge. Cars riding that very well again this year. And another lap going on the 48. Uh, the 48 just got a little bit in the way last time. It was not really their fault. Uh, excuse me, that's John Potter in the 44. My apologies, the two Lamborghinis uh, circulating still today, which is good news for them. So top three have got through. Action has died down for a moment. Let's go to the pit lane. Leading GTD Porsche in the hands of Zachary Robichon. What a debut for that young man in that team. And his teammate, Pat Long, is with Shiana. Patrick, this is one of the tracks that you don't yet have a win at, sharing the car with Zachary. He's clearly doing a very good job, but how has the Porsche been for you? Yeah, the car's been really good this weekend. We rolled off the truck. We were happy from the onset. Uh, Zach Robichon is a star in the making. It's been great to watch him. Uh, he needs no introduction. He's doing an excellent job all season. Um, we're just going to have to play it right here. It's going to really come down to the pit stop. I was talking to Jeremy before the race, and clearly the key is a quick pit stop and uh, keeping away from this rain. Do you go early and chance the uh, rain coming in, or do you wait and do your normal window? Well, we're sort of backed into um, making it to the end on fuel, and it butts right against the minimum drive time for the silver or the amateur drivers. So uh, some will dive straight in, even though they're not good to, for fuel to the end, and play their luck of even saving fuel or looking for a yellow. But for us, we can't afford to do that as the leaders. So uh, it'll be just right there on the cusp. Hey, good luck, Patrick. Thank you. Oh, very interesting. Thanks, for Pat Long for giving us that great questioning from Shea Adam and great respect to all of our teams and drivers in the pit lane. Yeah, super to work with, make our job very easy uh, indeed. Well, coming round to an hour and 10 minutes to go, and that would mean that the drive time has been done for the silver or bronze driver, and we've got movement on the pit lane, Shea Adam. The 86 Meyer Shank Racing Acura have their crew members standing up on the pit wall ready to receive their car, which would mean Trent Hinman with a very short drive time, but when you've got Super Mario Farbacher in here at Belle Isle, you kind of understand that. The other car that's up on the pit wall, the number 12 Lexus. They are anticipating Frankie Montecalvo coming in soon and handing over to Townsend Bell. Side by side for second place, and there's a touch and through goes the master uses the Lexus coming out of the family section as a bit of a screen as a pick there as they came through. Super opportunistic manoeuvre by Bomarito and goes in the second. His teammate, by the way, Tristan Nunes, set the fastest lap of the race last time around. So those masters, Jeremy Shaw, might be the smallest engines of the TPI, but they're starting to find their stride. Yeah, they are, and uh, it was a, well, you've got to feel frustration there for, for the number 31 car. He, he, he trying to make a move down the inside and, he, he, he wasn't really quite incisive enough. He, wasn't, he didn't trust, perhaps, that uh, number 12 car. It was Frankie Montecalvo, wasn't it? And Frankie just kept his line through there, did absolutely everything right. And people could have stuffed it in there and decided not to. And he played the price because that allowed Jonathan Bomberito an opportunity to get alongside into turn 11. And then once again, Montecalvo did exactly what you're supposed to do. He didn't try and correct anything. Nah. He just kept to his line. And that just happened to be in the favor of car number 55. It's the 14. It's not Frankie. Beg your pardon. Yeah, it's high stand in that car. But, uh, well, you know, people will be a bit disappointed with himself and with the car ahead. And there was a touch as they came out of 11, just the slightest of rubs. But he leaves to fight another lap. Mm. And he's already right on the back of the Mazda as they go past the leader in GTD, the 73 Park Place Porsche. That's the dark grey with red striped car. And again, the Mazda gets the best of the traffic, and that's not always the way with Mazda. Uh, pits are closed, we've got an incident on the circuit. Uh, and that is going to change everybody's strategy because now all of the GTD cars will come in, and it's... Well, that I think was it's Victor Franzoni, Somebody's it? hit the wall and continued. That's what's happened at turn three. There's a bit of bodywork there, but it's a dark colour. It's not helping me at all. Oh, it's, it's the Junkos car. Yeah, it's the Junkos so. car. Well done, Jeremy. He's just slid it in the left rear of that car and wiped off a little bit of bodywork, but also disturbed the tyre wall on the driver's left-hand side of that right-hand corner. And he's going to need 
some attention to the left rear. They'll just take off the whole rear bodywork section and throw another one at it. And if it doesn't, that's always assuming that it doesn't uh, have an issue before that. OK, that was turn seven at the end of the strand. My apologies now that I see a slightly wider view of it. Thank you to our TV colleagues for that. And he just got in a little bit hot. There is a bump just as you come through the apex there. And if you're not quite on the right line, I'll go in a tiny bit too quick. Just unsettles the back of the car. Victor, I'm afraid, making uh, quite heavy contact there with the tyre wall. But fortunately, with the tyre wall, because that was in front of a very, very unforgiving concrete yeah, wall uh, behind uh, that, it. That ruins that strategy for uh, my shank racing there. Yeah. They're trying to uh, get that number 80 six car into the pits perhaps uh, and now the pits are closed so everybody's going to be on the same uh, strategy here now and everybody's going to be coming into the to make their pit stop or in gtd at least uh, as uh, as soon as they can this uh, jeremy just to confirm the drive time for uh, gtd Torna. it's uh, 40 minutes yeah so we are i think it's 30 for this race it's a short one isn't it and just five for prototypes that's just for yeah, 30 minutes, big bone, yeah. 30 minutes for the prototypes. Uh, 30 minutes for the GTTs, five minutes for the prototypes. Yeah. So we're inside that now. Uh, just. So, Shea Adam, I would presume that every single GT Daytona team are going to come in. Gulp. I'm going to have to have 75 eyeballs to try and watch all these pit stops. Uh, interesting thing is that most teams have four tires up on the wall. That yeah. doesn't necessarily mean that they will use all four, but they're not letting anybody else on the pit lane know what their strategy is until the car comes in, gets two tires, four tires, no tires, and then leaves again. So that's going to have to uh, be head on a swivel, I think, John. Yeah, and it's a tough one, isn't it? Because it won't be a full fuel fill here, Shea, and... Um, they, they, they can change drivers super quickly here. So it's probably going to be the, the driver change or the tyre change if they do all four, which will be the longest of the thing. Because I think the fuel will only be, it's not even half a tank of fuel they're going to slam in. For who, for I Michigan will GTDs. be shocked if anyone does all four tyres yeah, genuinely. Well, done. It, um, it's going to be, it, it's, uh, you know, it's an hour and six minutes to go. So uh, that's, yeah, it's, it's more fuel than, than, than could have been, let's say. Uh, so uh, it, it's. But well, they've, uh, they've already had a bit of yellow. I wonder if any of the prototypes will come in. Oh, oh. they'll all come in. Yes, they'll all come in, and they will have to make another pit stop before the end of the race now, because this is too early for the prototypes, unless there's another a lot of caution to be able to get to the end from here. So now it's six. now going to be a two pit stop race for the prototypes. Oh, right. Okay. So this one and a splash. We'll wait for the pits to open, and indeed we get the word from race control that the pits have opened. And in Ipsa yeah. WeatherTech sports and car competition, the two classes are split when they come into the pit lane. So the Daytona prototypes will come into the pit lane first. The GTDs will go around and they'll come back in next time. So, Shea, take a deep breath. <gasps> yeah, and just one quick note before that happens. There's a, there's a couple of GTD cars are still uh, running around trying to catch up with the back of the field. Behind them is, uh, is John Bennett, number 54, uh, core or uh, Nissan uh, so he's going to be quite some way behind the other prototypes when they come into the pits right let's see what happens leader gets the first chance to pit of course Juan Montoya with an hour and five minutes pretty much on the nose by the time he'll get back to the pit lane does he come in yes he does the all in and through goes the park place Porsche which now leads the race as no, it crosses all oh, right down. it's a lap down okay and Shea Adam, you have got all of the prototypes. Take your pick. Okay, first off, the leader was Juan Pablo Montoya. He's getting out of the car there, at the very least doing the left front tire. Dane Cameron getting in. They are changing both of the front tires on the Penske. They are doing all four tires on the number 55 Mazda. That is John Thumbomarito's day done. Harry Tignall has taken over. I did not see the 77 in, but I no longer see uh, Ollie Jarvis's helmet. Nobody's left the pit lane yet. First car moving is the number six. Front tires only on that car. We are doing rear tires on the number 10. The seven beats its teammate out. Ricky Taylor gets out ahead of Dean Cameron. Then comes the 31. That is Felipe Nasser, who did two tires, I believe. I couldn't see which ones they were. Then the Mazda. Then one of the JDC Miller Motorsports cars. Connick Minolta Cadillac is next with Jordan Taylor aboard. And then
we had the number five Mustang sampling car. Last two cars on the pit lane are the 54 Nissan, which looked like it did four tires and a driver change, and the uh, Yunkos Cadillac, which is still in place. And you were spot on, Shear. The 77 did, did not, not come pit. in. This is really interesting. Now, the car is fast, and now it's going to suck. It didn't, they don't need to make a pit stop right now, so great strategy there by Mazda Team Yost. They've certainly got plenty of fuel in, aboard that car now, so he'll be uh, take the restart in the lead. He'll be able to put the hammer down, pull away. Everybody's going to have to make one more pit stop. It's going to be really interesting to see what happens now. I, I'm surprised so many prototypes came in, to be honest, when you've when everybody's got to make another pit stop. I suppose it makes the last pit stop for everyone who's just stopped a little shorter because they'll take less fuel. I also wonder whether someone will go on a massive fuel save in DPI now and try and make an hour on a DPI. That is an ask. I think it's about 50 to 55 minutes on a prototype, if that, around here, because there's a lot of flat out running. Yeah. Um, the 77 race engineer is none other than yeah. Lena Gade. Le never doubt the gate. And she knows that the, that car's got to come back yeah. in again. And what did we say on our Porsche? A case the race. Jeremy, track yeah. position. Yeah, no, oh. and, and he's going he to have track position now. He's going he's gonna to make, uh, he hopes, and she hopes, just one pit stop now before the end of this race. Everyone's going to do one more stop. He's going to be able to put the hammer down now at the rear side. He's got, uh, still, tyres should be in pretty good shape. He's got a, a, a relatively light car because a lot less fuel than everybody else. Uh, and don't forget as well, that 77 car did the fastest lap of the race before the yellow came out. The Yungos car's back in the pit lane, by the way, and still stationary as in come the hordes of GT Daytonas. Whee! All right, 73 comes in, hits its marks first. Patrick Long taking over on that car. They are doing left sides at the very least. The 57 Cat car is in that Acura, seeing Cat get in and Christina get out. Super Mario is getting into the number 86. All of the cars I've just told you about have done left side tires so far. I'm watching to see if they're going to do the rights on any of those cars. No, they're not. Left sides only. The 73 comes off its air jacks, fires back up, waiting on the fuel. Patrick Long leaves his car before anyone else, and he should maintain. The 14 Lexus leaves and almost runs over an IMSA pit lane official, not watching where he was going. The car's leaving the pit lane. The 57 got out second. Then both of the Lexuses jumped the 86. There was a problem on that car during the stop with the right uh, left rear air gun. It would not re-secure the tire to that car. So Super Mario still sitting in the pit lane up on the air jacks. This car has now dropped down behind all the cars that came into the pit lane except the number seven note now it's behind the 76 mclaren too terrible pit stop for one of their cars excellent pit stop for the other uh, the question we need answering sure if you don't mind if you can nip down the lexus and the m sullivan team uh, i'm guessing i'm guessing rear tires uh, for that if they only took the two and i'm pretty certain they did only take the two on the bright yellow and black lexus so by the way bill obler now installed in the 96 GTD BMW, which started at the back, now up the sixth in class. Well, that's the order they came in, actually, I, I think. Um, right. So we're gonna, it's going to be reset from there when they come around uh, okay. next time. But what a great start that must have been for the, the uh, number seven it was. team to vault uh, three, three positions there. You got ahead of the number six, 55 and 31. So brilliant pit stop. Uh, by uh, the number seven team. You know, again, I wonder whether they took on a little bit less fuel than some of the other guys. If you know you've got to stop, yeah, yeah. take that track position. Yeah. Porsche keys to the race, track position. Very, very important. Yeah. No mistakes in the pits. That was another Porsche keep the race. I've got to say that, uh, well, the Acura team of MSR uh, won great pit stop and won not so good. Lexus update from the pit lane. The 12 Lexus has new rear tires only. The 14 Lexus has left side new tires only. So they split their wow. strategy. That'll be very captivating to watch. Here we go back to great flag racing. And it's a master that links up to the line. And it's Tristan Nunes who did not stop under that yellow, full course yellow spot on an hour to go. And down the inside, a great overtake maneuver at turn one for the number 10 Cadillac. Now with Jordan Taylor on board, and Steven Simpson has felt the draft of the Cadillac going through. That shiny black machine then takes over that position and goes up into sixth. Here come the GTD cars, they've gone through as well. One, two, three wide going into turn three as the core autosport Nissan now in the hands of Colin Brown oh. and off for the ah, rear wheel. Oh, it's been in the wall. The 86 Acura, which had that long pit stop, has got a rear wheel that is missing a tyre and is at a jaunty angle to say the very least. So Mario Farmbacker's day has been very short. Full course yellow. 
This really helps all of the DPIs, and that's put a spanner in the 77's works at the moment. Uh, big debris on the exit of turn 13, just off to our right in the IMSA Broadcast Centre. That car has hit the wall coming out of 13 on the restart. Rear suspension damage on the left hand side at the back. Yeah, curiously, I mean, stopped there right at the pit entrance. Or, or Suspension's you... broke. I don't think, I think yeah, he's done the drive shaft on the left it. side. Yeah, I guess. So the half shaft probably jumped out the gearbox. Yeah, because that, that poor pit stop there, you'd, you'd presume you're trying to make up time after that. And uh, it's compounded uh, the issue for that. That must have been coming back to the green. Yeah, absolutely. For Mario. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, Jeremy, under an hour to go now, yes. and this just completely shuffles the pack as far as DPI concerned. Everyone has stopped in GTD, and all of a sudden, any thoughts of uh, problems and tight on fuel issues are just going to be literally evaporating right now. They're going to have enough room, so GTD will not see those guys back in the pits. GTD have enough fuel to go at the end. LM. Uh, DPI rather go to a slightly different fuel map and maybe save some. Oh, it's just a huge slide. Now, did something give way there for Mario as he was coming out of 13? It was such a violent move. Uh, he was sliding coming through already. But that was a big slide going into the corner. Cold tyres, of course, and a frustrated driver. Broken left suspension at the rear of the car and he trundles down in towards the pit lane area but hasn't moved any further from that i wonder if we can just get a quick tour on that and get him out of the well, way well yes quite get it out of the way because uh, certainly that's what uh, lena gade lena gade will be hoping in that number 77 pit that car well, is got a flat bed now coming down. Flat to a, a one-stop strategy in the race everybody else will uh, that team hopes they have to make another one, but if there's more cautions like this, then maybe they can stretch their fuel to the end. It's a very, very odd one for Mario. He's in behind the 76 McLaren. And was there a touch there? Yes, there was on the back of the McLaren at turn 12, and then at 13, it, on it. it just snapped away as he came yeah. through the apex, the I middle part of the corner. I don't think that was a, uh, a driver error. I think something, something, something broke. snapped on the car, I think. The yeah. left rear was the hub that they had trouble with on the pit stop, and they had to bring a second gun over the wall to get that done. So was there an issue already with the left rear of the car? As it dropped down and left, yeah. it looked OK, but it did look to me, Jeremy, I mean, Mario's a pretty, <laughs> pretty hot shoe, a decent little steerer. He's won here twice, been second once and fourth once. Uh, this will be his first non-finish. Uh, he'll be annoyed with that, and the team will be scratching their heads, as will the driver when he gets back and sees the footage from that. Of course, in terms of the lead in the overall championship, this race does not affect that, so uh, this still in the WeatherTech Sports Car Championship, the main series, they'll continue to lead the GT Daytona. Yeah. Doesn't help them, of course, in the Sprint Championship with the DNF. Yeah, the Sprint Championship, that'll cost them dearly, that's right, because uh, they came into here, they, they were, what, second, weren't they, at, uh, yeah. at Mid-Ohio, so uh, came here second in the points in the Sprint Cup Series, so that'll cost them a lot of ground there. Uh, Ian McCarthy has tweeted at IMSA Radio Shea and said, uh, sorry, Shea, didn't quite hear you there during those GT and DPI pit stops. Could you just repeat all of that? Except he's just kidding. Sure, no problem. For the fans, <laughs> right? <laughs> at IMSA Radio, if you'd like to get in touch with us, don't forget the check and flag ends the race but starts the conversation. Michelin Post Race Tech on RS2 IMSA Radio at the end of the race. Once we've handed over to Tony for the post-race celebrations down at Scotch Fountain and the victory circle there will carry on and we are driven by you at that point your questions points of order anything that you want to bring up about this weekend here on Belle Isle for the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Guard Championship at IMSA Radio use the hashtag Michelin PRT for post-race tech Jeremy Shane myself will try our best to answer that, try and get some answers 
from the people concerned as well as she continues to patrol the pit lane area. That's Michelin Post Race Tech coming up after our race coverage. And the number 86 car has now been uh, hauled away uh, out behind, out of the way. We should be going back to green fairly soon. And this certainly is good news for number 77 team because, again, it opens up their strategy a little bit more. They're, they're looking to make this race on just one pit stop. And uh, they, stay out they, out. they need to stay out for about another uh, 10 minutes uh, before they will come in for their uh, only pit stop. And everybody else is going to have to come in as well at some stage. The question is, do they come in at the earliest opportunity as well? Or do they stay out a bit longer? If they do come in early with the number 77 car, they're going to be taking a lot less fuel than is the number 77. So 77 this is really will go to the end of its fuel now. That's that. It's the end of its They'll uh, stay out yeah. as long as they can and hope for another full course caution. In yeah, the but they, if, they, if they come in, if they sort of gamble on there being another yellow before the other guys can come in, maybe they can come in and take their fuel. It's, it's, it's really interesting. Well, I think you hold the track so position. The, the uh, Corvette safety car is in. You hold your track position and use all the fuel if you're leading at the moment. Back to green, another good restart as the DPIs thunder past us down towards turn one. And Justin Nunes leads from Ricky Taylor. Dick Cameron was looking down the inside there. And couldn't get that done. And the two Acuras absolutely together. The two teammates for Roger Penske. And here comes the 31 wheeling car round the outside. Gets a good run, but will be on the wrong side of the track. And to the left hand side as they go to the right hander at turn three. That's uh, Felipe Nasser, of course, in that car now. And no, he couldn't get that done. Right in behind is Harry Tignall now, who'll go to the end in the Mazda number 55. Then it's the number 10 Cadillac racing the Koninga Minolti car. And that's got Jordan Taylor behind the wheel. So the two brothers are out on track at the same time. We're in second. Jordan in sixth position at the front of the field. Tristan Nunes, a decent start, Jeremy. He made sure he wasn't going to be under threat in turns one and two. Yeah, indeed, and he's going to want to put the hammer down now and turn some really quick laps if he possibly can, take advantage of the fact that he's got a relatively light fuel load on that number 77 Mazda. But, uh, uh, but uh, Ricky Taylor's having none of that. He's staying right in his wheel tracks. The weather is darkening up to the Ooh, look, direction. There's a bubble there for 77. Oh, and that's side by side, yeah. Just coming out of the... Just left hand down, and he just 11. got no forward drive at all, and that's a change of lead. Well, using the Michelins that he started the race on, of course, so maybe the new tyre advantage is what's doing for something there. And Dan Cameron now leads the race for Acura Team Penske. Now, there is a bit of weather in the area. Told severe weather warning, which has been called about 30 miles away. So that's something to bear in mind as well. Goodness, how many variables are the teams having to deal with at the moment? Well, Nunes not able to go with the leader. Just couldn't get off the corner there, Jeremy. And I didn't see the distinctive black lines behind the car. So if it had spun the rear tyres up. So, so, sorry, Cameron did get past, didn't he, yeah, at yeah, that restart? Through. At the restart? No, no, no. Yeah, because he was in third place. Ah, so he got he past his teammates. Yes, 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 sorry, I, 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 yeah. yes. And he's just gone through and got the lead as well. Absolutely. Correct. But it, yeah. That was very odd from the Mazda. Just didn't seem to pick up out the corner at all. Uh, they'd had some electrical problems early on in the week. Let's hope it's not a recurrence of that. Particularly racing at the moment, Felipe Nasser in behind the second of the Acuras, third position. That's a real good scrap through turn one and two. Sunshine here, beautiful at the moment, but definitely darker skies over to the west north of Belle Isle, which is where the weather normally comes from here. Hawksworth is on a charge. In the in GTD, here's the battle for the lead coming through to one Hawks with his he's moved past the number 57 of uh, Catherine Legg at that restart. He's really putting the pressure now on Patrick Long in the park place Porsche. Uh, Hawks with has the left side, three is for the other car. It's the dark grey Porsche, and then three very yellow and black cars sitting in behind in the 14 Lexus. Then the Catherine Legg, Caterpillar sponsored Acura, then the second of the Lexus, the number 12 cars. First through fourth in GT Daytona, absolutely together. Pat Long 
hugely experienced Porsche driver. He'll be doing enough, but he knows he's going to the end on that set of Michelins. And they only took left sides, of course. Slightly defends. Oh, not enough. And down the inside into turn seven. I thought Pat was going to close the door there. He thought about it, and here comes Catherine Leg as well. Oh, and there's a little nudge there from the Porsche on the Acura, and that's put Catherine into the grey. And through goes the second Lexus. So Pat Long goes down from first to second. Catherine Leg goes down from third to fourth. And going up positions, Jack Hawks with the second, and Townsend Bell. Yeah. Uh, sorry, uh, Lexus going to the lead, and Townsend Bell going to third. Just proves how difficult it is when you get offline here. There really is no coming back side by side action in around the fountain area, and there was just absolutely nothing that Catherine could do. Having Take the opportunity to get alongside and try and go for second, finds herself down in fourth. 48 minutes to go. Let's go down to the pit lane. We'll take a breath for a moment and share Adam is down at Mazda Team Yost. I went and checked in with the uh, people down at Mazda Team Yost about the 77, the pass that was made by Dane Cameron. They said it was just a lack of tires. There's nothing wrong with the car, and they are not worried. It was just Tristan having one hand behind his back in that fight. To the end of his run. I'm not surprised because that Mazda is, is pretty good on its side. It just didn't seem to accelerate coming off the corner. Well, he'll be trying to stretch his fuel as long as possible. And that's another consideration there for that 77 Mazda. Got to stay out as long as possible. 47 minutes to go now, and I would say that a DPI can go from here. No, Great battle. No, no, think not? No, another lap or two, okay. probably. Great battle for the lead. And the Hawksworth move went to the right, then the left. Yeah. Pat Long just almost outbreaking himself. And Catherine Lake did get a nose ahead going into turn eight. Pat very forcefully taking the inside curve, but that was all right. But Catherine, as soon as she got off the racing line, there was zero grip there, and she couldn't fight off Townsend Bell. It was a Pat went a little long into turn seven at the end of the strand there. Catherine was half a car's length up, maybe quarter of a car's length up. Yeah, Pat certainly left the door open, didn't he? And uh, he was. Uh... And Bill Oberlin in the yeah. 96 car, I said to him, was going, that car was going well, and that continues to go well. Uh, sixth before the pit stops, now fifth. And he's right in behind Catherine Legg. Remember, this car started at the back, the blue and yellow Turner Motorsport car. He qualified on pole after a stunning lap by Robbie Foley. The settings of the car, the camber settings, which is the angle at which the tyres are presented to the road by the suspension, were out by a small amount, but out they were. And that's a red line, that's a solid red line, not a dotted one in post-qualifying tech. So they were put to the back of the field. Robbie Foley did a great job early on and made up five positions. Five or six positions, actually, and Bill Oberlin's already taken up the baton and right. started to and, run and, with it. And here is why I question that uh, that call about the uh, the tyres, because Tristan Nunez just set the fastest lap of the race in car number 77 in second position, right. a 121.835, so a couple of tenths away from the record set last year by Felipe Nasser. I've got a feeling that a lot of these guys at the front, but clearly now not Nunez, I think a lot of these guys are, off, are saving fuel. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I, I, I certainly, um, and Shea, you, you can hear the cars as they go past. Uh, it's a little more difficult for us in the Emerson Broadcast Centre, but it looks to me as though certainly the lead Acura is, uh, is lifting off, uh, not breaking any earlier, but lifting off very early on into Turn 1. Yes, almost as soon as he comes out of the Chevrolet Bridge, so about 100 metres before the flag stand even, now he's lifted. He lifted about 50 meters before the flag stand and didn't start breaking into turn one until about another second after that. Dane Cameron is massively in fuel safe mode. Yeah, they're trying to stretch that as long as they can go. They might well, think he's just, again, he's just set that car's best lap of the race. Uh, and uh, once again, uh, Tristan Nunez has, has improved upon that. 21.459 that time for Tristan Nunez. So a new lap record for car number 77.
Well, it's starting to get really, really competitive in GTD. And the top five all leaving the ground, all four Michelins off the circuit as they go over that little bridge that's uh, just after turn two on the start of the straight, the run down to turn three. There's a little sort of stream that runs underneath there as part of the park here at Belle Isle. And it just has a little rise and fall there. And all of the top five GT Daytonas are going over the top of that and leaving the ground. Looks more like a, a rally stage in San Marino with the cars catching a little bit of air. But they are going I would say we're looking, we're looking at making pit stops any time now. I think uh, you can expect to see the leaders on the pit lane. And the question will be, Jeremy Shaw and Shea Adam, do they all come at the first possible opportunity or does somebody... Sh Throw the dice, share what's happening up in there. JBC have both of their crews up on the wall for the 84 and the 85 Cadillacs, neither and the Nissan in. team is on the wall. Yeah, but neither came in. Right, neither right. came in. That's interesting. Well, they'll get up there early just to start flexing, make sure they've got everything right. And Pillar is going to be busy next time around the show. I think you're right, Jeremy. Wheel and Engineering team, the, the car that won last year here, they just clambered up on the wall too. And now there's a little bit of movement for the number seven accurate team Penske. Halfway around the lap, the leading six car with Dave Cameron. I think Cameron might stay out. I think Cameron might stay out. I think the six car might come in. That would be the now the Penske team are split on the pit lane. They don't have their two picks together, remember. Uh, that's a, a tactic that they've employed for some time. The question for me is how long can that Mazda go now? Uh, they have got almost an hour but with safety car intervention and that there can't be much left in the tank of that second place car but they are pushing the 77 car is pushing hard and Nunes has caught the leader here they come round the last couple of corners we see them now and neither of the leaders are going in but second and uh, third and fourth are so in comes the second Acura in comes the wheel and Cadillac also Oh, that's interesting. The master comes in as well. So there are plenty of takers also coming in the Nissan and at least one, oh, I think both of the JDC cars. Shea Adam has the master and the Cadillac and the Acura. Where are you looking, Shea? Uh, all three of them. Splash of fuel for Harry Tinknell and the master. Oh, no, the rear wheels were spinning on the air jacks before he came down. I don't know if the Ipsa lane official saw that. Harry is the first one to move. Next is the Penske, but the seven gets away well before the Mazda and the 31 Merlin Engineering Cadillac still sitting in its box. No tires for any of these cars, just fuel. Yeah, that makes sense, doesn't it? Because it's the least amount of time on pit road. Our portion keys to the race. All about track position, get the cars turned around and back out there. They reckon they can do the 41 minutes and 13 seconds, whatever happens on the track. But they will have to do it with a set of Michelin tyres that have gone a stint and about the quarter. Those the three cars came out of the pits in the same order they went in. And pretty much the same margins between them, I would suggest. Perhaps the seven car pulled out just a, a hair. the first roll of the strategic dice. Here come the other leaders now. They've got the court coming in now from the Lakers to get the court the wrong side of it. Safety car that could be in real trouble. And in come the leading pair of cars and the rest of the DPI field. Shout. And the six did not want to come in, John. The team was not up on the wall waiting for him. Initially, they did respond. They are doing fuel only. 77 is in full pit stop. Tristan Nunez, who has gotten out of the car. Beautiful job done. Oliver Jarvis has gotten in. They're doing four tires on this Mazda. So now it's going to be the inverse of what was before. It's fuel only for both the 10, the Conic Minolds Cadillac, which has some body damage to the left rear, and fuel only for the 5, the Mustang sampling car. The caution's out, the pit's closed. Perfect stop for Mazda. Uh, yeah, they were a bit slow getting away though, and they've been jumped by the GDC Miller Motorsport car. The Acura definitely did get away. And the Mazda longer because they were putting more fuel in. This is super stuff. And it is the 10 that has shed some bodywork. The Cunningham and Alta Cadillac has shed some bodywork on the circuit. And it's right on the racing line. The yellow and red flag. 
showing that there's something on the track that shouldn't be there. Often it means that there's some kind but of the number fluid 10 there. car lost it yeah. before the pit stops. Yeah. Before the pit stops, because he was running ahead of the uh, of the, the 84 and number five, and he lost it there and uh, cost himself uh, a, a lot of ground. Well, um, and he's not the back end of the car off. And Jordan, for a moment, you could almost see the thought process where he thought, I'm going to go down the escape road. No, I'm not. I'm going to try and get round. Oh, I wish I'd gone down the escape road. Yeah. And that uh, cheese wedge from behind the left rear wheel knocked askew and has fallen off. Not sure that'll affect it too much in terms of aerodynamics here. Um, but that has brought out what is now that oh, third full course caution. Two or three, yeah. And this again will allay any fears that there might have been on fuel for GT runners. So they're going to be good, they'll be fighting to the end. Whilst the debris at turn eight is taken away in that section around the fountain. The Cadillac in-race rundown looks like this. GT Daytona, Lexus, Jack Hawks with leads from Pat Long from Lexus T-Bell in, in third, 1473, 12, 57. Catherine Legg in fourth in the Acura, Bill Oberlin in the Turner BMW in fifth. Then Andy Lally will catch up to the back of that leading five yeah, in the Lamborghini. He had pretty much caught them. Yeah, he had. Uh, Ryan DL in the Audi in seventh position. That's the eight Starworks car. Lamborghini Huracan, Brian Sellers right back in it after their early travails in the 48 car, then Lawson Ashen back in the Mercedes number 74 and making up the top 10, Paul Holt in the McLaren. At the top of the field, Dan Cameron leads for Acura, Team Penske second, is Ricky Taylor in the seven car, team car there, then Felipe Nasser in the red white Cadillac number 31, the wheel and engineering car, then the dark red of Harry Tinknell with the newest tyres of those guys. He's sitting looking very, very good at the moment. Then Stephen Simpson in the 84. Then Colin Brown. And then the guys who just... So where's the 77 come out? Ollie Jarvis has come out in ninth position there. Yeah. I'm quite sure where he should... I wouldn't have thought he should have been that far down. I mean, they went, they went a lap further uh, than, the, uh, than, than the other contenders. Came in with the number six. Number six and six guy was able to keep uh, get out in the lead. Uh, I think the number 77 would have been a bit of a tall order to do that. But here's the question, Jeremy. The guys at the front, how much fuel steering do they still have to do? No, they should be there fine now. Right. Yeah. OK. So everybody fuel to the end is what Jeremy Shaw is saying. Who's the car that's only done the one stop? Of course, that's Ollie Jarvis. But that hasn't quite played out for them. All right. And the number 50 car as well, actually, that had that... Uh that lengthy delay. It had fallen a lap down after Victor Franz only found the wall, the, the wall, the tyre sacks just before the previous caution. It's now back on the lead lap. Uh, let's go to Shea Adam before we go back to Green. Where are you, Shea? Tristan Nunez had to work really hard during that stint. Everybody's fueled to the end. Everybody's got a good car underneath them. You guys have the freshest tyres, though. Can that 77 Mazda hold off the trailing pack? Yeah, it's, you know, it's Detroit, so you never know what can happen. Uh, they could get pretty scrappy in the front, and, you know, I, I trust Ollie. He's... Um, he's amazing behind the wheel, so um, there's no one I'd rather have uh, after me in the car than him. So um, I'm really excited to see what he's got. Um, but yeah, that was that was a tough run out there. <laughs> Did the yellow help you or not? Um, I don't know. It's tough to say. Um, these guys have been watching the strategy and looking over all the uh, and analyzing everything, so they can see it better than I can. But I mean, I don't think it could hurt us. So we'll see what happens. You scared us out there when Dane Cameron got past you. Was everything okay with the car? Yeah, it's just, you know, they, they were on fresh tires. I was on uh, hot, um, or sorry, um, heat cycle old tires. So I, the, the tires are pretty pretty much gone by the time I got out of the car. So I was pretty much hanging on for dear life. I'm um, surprised I could stick with him that much. It just shows how much this uh, RT24P has improved uh, in the past couple of years. So it's uh, truly a pleasure to drive this thing. Tristan, great job out there. Thank you. I think he's uh, hiding his light under a bushel slightly there because he did set the fastest lap of the race just after that. So clearly was learning how to manage that issue. May not have been fastest off the corner, just taking ridiculous amount of speeds into it. 
Yeah, interesting that. I mean, you know, he went a lot faster after that than he did uh, before he was overtaken. I think he just had uh, trouble getting heat into the tyres, uh, back into the tyres, having cooled down during that course caution period, and that kind of uh, caught him unawares a little bit at Turn 11. And that's a little bit of relative inexperience for Tristan Nunez. But uh, it Will Owen, sorry, Terry, yeah. it's now gone. Will Owen has called back into the pits yeah. in the number 50, Young Cross Racing. Yeah. So that car is now back on the lead lap and it's made another stop, so it's good to go to the end from here. Yeah, let's see what uh, Will can make that car do. Impressed with Will's attitude. So, the tactical side is taken out of it now with everyone fueled to the end. Our portion keys to the race, the weather is playing ball and the threatening dark clouds have gone off to the north of us. So the Chevrolet Sports Car Classic is really living up to its name, and we've still got 33 and a half minutes to go. It's a short race, and now it's a sprint to the end. The trophies and the adulation and the bragging rights tonight here in Detroit for those that stay on, and tomorrow for those that are going to the Le Mans Teste are all up for grabs. Live Le Mans test day coverage on RS1, our sister channel tomorrow, the only place that you can hear what's going on at the Circuit de la Sarthe. With uh, Johnny Palmer and Joe Bradley along with a cast of thousands there as the guests uh, cycle in and out of our temporary studio in the press room before we get built up for the race week itself. So... Uh, Hello to all of the GT Le Mans teams who don't race with us at this IMSA race, but are normal IMSA competitors, including, of course, the hometown heroes of Corvette. Porsche out there as well. And Greasy Competizione running that uh, blue, not inspired livery on their Ferrari. Coming down a half an hour to go. Some and dark clouds off to the west, but... Uh, Oliver Askew is still with us here, and he just look at his radar screen again. They, they're calling uh, uh, the rain about an hour away, which is long after we're finished, so we shall see. So we've got shadows out there now. We've got the sun poking through once again here on the race we, on Bel Air. We might get the best of the weather today. It's yeah. it's pretty much, if you open the back door of the Ibsen Broadcast Centre and look out, it looks like end of days behind <laughs> us uh, at the moment. But uh, just on 32 minutes to go then, and I think the safety car will be coming in this time around, which will mean we'll get the restart. And to quote an old Jerry Anderson TV show, anything can happen in the next half hour. I thought it was a Thunderbirds are going. Well, you know, that was <laughs> that was the other one, that was Stingway. <laughs> Highly appropriate as we're in the middle of a river at the moment. Right, Jeremy, here we go again. It's all levelled off. Tactics now will not play a part. It's all about the drivers and the speed of the cars and staying away from the walls. Yeah, we'll see how, how aggressive Felipe Nasser here gets at the, at the restart. He can't 31. He's currently in third place behind the two Acuras. Well. Watch Tinknell. If he can get that Mazda's mm -hmm. little turbo engine spun up here. And we've seen that the Something all of the restarts, here. they have gone early. Let's see if Dan Cameron does that. Yes, he does. Side by side coming to the line. The 84 trying to go up the inside of Tignall and gets the nose of the Cadillac. And Stephen Simpson looked to try and make a move there. Even as they were coming to the line, it's still the two Acuras that lead from Philippe Nazi. Couldn't make a move then. Tignall was too busy defending to get on terms with the guys ahead of him. Colin Brown in the 54 Nesmo powered car looking at the back of Stephen Simpson side by side. And there's a pass. And Tignall, I said watch him at the start, as soon as he got spooled up, but he's going to lose the position. Simpson down the inside, there's contact. Oh, oh the Masters in the wall. The Masters in the wall. Tignall's in the wall. And that was Stephen Simpson who rather helped him in there. And that'll be a penalty, I'm pretty sure, on the 84 car. What a weekend it's been for JDC. They've not been out of their headlights, not always for the right reasons. That was an extremely ambitious move. Well, he got a good one because the, the, the Mazda was very slow coming out of turn three, no question about that. Ooh. And the Simpson saw his opportunity to die down the inside of the four. Not sure he was there, Jeremy. No, he was well, about a quarter of the way down, if comment. that. Full course yellow. Oh, my goodness. Harry Tinknell will be steaming 
made a good move on Felipe Nasser for third. Uh, there's damage to the left rear bodywork well, of the RTP24. Well, great move down the inside yeah. by Tinknell and... But, but very much compromised his speed there. Look at the... On the exit. The yellow car got a really good run off the corner. Harry moves over to try and cover the inside of the next corner, which he's doing straight away. Yeah. So how far was Simpson down? Well... A third of the way down? We, well, going into the braking area, they're both offline, and the, the, the Mazda turned in on him. I mean, let's, let's uh, you know, it's, it, it's a... He's got a bit of the corner, the other. I'm not sure I'd call anything on that one. I'd kind of say it was a racing incident. Certainly, Harry was trying to turn down to the corner, but the, uh, the JDC car, it was already there, quite frankly. They were side by side pretty much. Uh, wheel to wheel uh, on that short straight between three and four, ah. and they're both fighting position. They're both really some another on board here. Well, yeah, I mean, against the brake area, it's probably only half a car, isn't it? But but the point there is that the Mazda certainly is already turning down into the corner. And where does the JDC car go at that stage? Well, Tough he's got one. back out of it though, hasn't he? Because the, the Mazda's yeah, well, got yeah, to turn right. Yeah, 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 exactly right. I, I, it's a tough one. I, I, if, if I was, shame, because it was a great move down the inside of three. Move. There'll be no pass around here. That incident is under review, yeah, of course. And the, the guys will be looking very closely at that. It's a tough one. It, it, it's, that is a, we've see seen it from a bazillion one. angles, and race control will be looking at that as well. And all of the other cameras that they have that we don't see. Net result is another disappointment for Mazda and for Harry Tignall in particular, having made a great move to get up to third position. Uh, Stephen Simpson will be on the radio saying he turned down on me. Harry, Sim Harry Tinknell would be on the radio saying he hit me at the back. Oh, actually, Harry's still in the car. He's going to drive that car away. He gets yeah, a gear. before he laps down, so... Well, saves him a walk back. He's as far away as he can be. Engine has stalled on the two-litre turbocharged Mazda engine. And it's now uh, stuck in geez. gear. Now Sorry. it's l released. Race starts. They do have an onboard start of these prototypes. Uh, most, most of them have at least one. I think the master has two. He's in gear and he's gone. Uh, there's a bit of clean up required there. And the slightly second hand looking Mazda is making its way back to the pit lane. Super move. No doubt about the move for third. But then the Mazda just couldn't get off the corner. Tell you what, Simpson was further down yeah, than I thought exactly. he was. He was about three quarters of the yeah, way down, yeah. and then he did start to back out. Yeah. By the time the contact came, he was only a third of the way up the yeah. car, but he was nearly fully alongside there. He was much closer than, than I thought he was at one stage. Yeah, I'm not sure I'm going to make a call on that one because uh, you, you're right, He was. I think he was trying to get out of it, but at the same time, uh, Harry could have turned in a little bit later so and given him more of an opportunity to get to so get the ready four card get out of the way so little room so on the exit so of the tight. corner jeremy that's the, yeah. that's the issue that, uh, that you have there and it's a straight circuit um it's a tough one yeah it's a real shame for and of course we get the chance as as the race control does we get the chance to look at it over and over again those yeah. guys have got to make split setting decisions yeah. and that's why they're doing the driving and we're standing here yeah. 25 minutes yeah, to go. Well, the messy, isn't it? It's a shame. Yeah, let's hope we can get a 20 minute it's a run to the flag. Old-fashioned street fight, basically. Well, though, it has it? been. Basically. It has been. Chevrolet, Chevrolet sports car classic. We've had ev everything so far except the weather intervention that we so confidently predicted earlier on uh, this week. As it was a week ago, the Indy 500. Well, yes, exactly. And then it got off on time, and we had a smashing race at the Indy 500. Pretty good month of May, uh, in all honesty. Thoroughly enjoyed it. And the Mazda is into the pit lane. Shea Adam is watching. It's a slightly forlorn-looking car that comes in, battered, bruised, and turns into its pit lane. 
on. It sheds one of its dive planes as soon as it gets into the pit box as well as uh, bits of carbon fiber have come off this car. Not a nose that they will be able to replicate and use once again. They have given the signal that the day is done for this car. So that would be two DNFs for Harry Tinkle and Jonathan Bomarito in the last two years. Harry's gotten out of the car and he is walking back over to the wall. He did look at the car before he went back over. I'm going to follow him and see if maybe he's up for a conversation with the body language is telling me that Harry Tickman was one disappointed boy. Yeah, he's bound to be. Yeah, he, he's... Um, After such a good move, that's, you know, that's yeah, the yeah. thing. I'm that's up in the thing. third. He's just thinking to himself, I'm up in the third, I'll chase those two Acuras to... Oh. Yeah, I mean, the great thing, I'm sure, I'm sure if Shea can catch him, I'm sure he will have a chat because he's not one of those guys who's going to sulk. He'd be massively disappointed, but he is a, a realist and... Uh, and uh, he knows that he has to take the rough with the smooth when you're driving for a team like this. Well, I know, but, that, uh, uh, I know that Johnny Palmer and Joe Bradley are listening over here in Le Mans at the moment, so that's something, Joe, for you to ask uh, Harry as well tomorrow uh, when he'll turn up to do the test day. Full course yellow, 24 minutes to go. At IMSA Radio, hashtag Michelin PRT, please, for afterwards. We've got a lot a lot of incidents to talk about, not much racing so far, although there's been some really, really decisive overtaking manoeuvres, which have looked very good. But there's been a, a bit of untidiness as well. Is, yeah, the problem is it's so competitive here that you make a move on somebody and you lose momentum, and it gives somebody else an opportunity there. And, uh, you know, it's... Uh, there's so much at stake here. I mean, it, it, it is so competitive. Everyone should try and make a move and get the best finish they can. We're about to go back to green. Let's have a quick word. Oh, not, no, we're not. We've still got track vehicles out. Uh, so, shit, Adam, you can take your time and talk to Harry. Ah, oh, Harry, I hate to do this. What happened out there, man? Yeah, it's a tricky one. I mean, we're kind of racing to the end from that point, so you had to make the positions up on the track and uh, had a really good run out of two. Um, Slipstream Nasser, he was very fair, you know, went down the inside. It's difficult to judge on cold tyres, cold brakes after the restart, but uh, made the move stick, and uh, obviously we got a slower exit, and I'm not sure which, one, which car it was, the yellow car, kind of obviously got a run, I defended, I kind of see, saw him sort of uh, back out the move, but then in the brake zone, I just absolutely annihilated from behind, and uh, yeah, into the wall, so managed to get it back, but the car will be retired from him. Thanks for talking to us. No worries. Yeah, good lad, Harry. Yeah, nail on the head. Yeah, and, I mean, you know, he was... Uh, nice enough to say that Steve Simpson was was seen to be backing out of it, and, yeah. I, and I think now having seen it um, um, 11 times, I'd agree with that assessment. Harry's still going to be upset that he's the one that ends up in the wall, of course, and we wait to see what the adjudication is from race control, as uh, that is being looked at at the moment as we come back to green. And let's see what happens here as we go back to Green and again. again. Another great start by Simpson as he's hassling the back of Ricky Taylor and right in behind him, Felipe Nasser. Then Colin Brown in the Nissan. Well, is the Nissan now going to be playing a part here as well? Behind the Nissan, the black Cadillac is Jordan Taylor and just Fortier. Well, that's been a good look. Hassling the Frenchman down the inside. Oh, there's a touch. Colin Brown and he's coming to contact with the Cadillac of Taylor and here comes Fortier, Fortier makes the move and that's exactly what Jeremy Shaw was seeing whilst we're in yellow, you get a, a move from Colin Brown, tries to take a position, ends up losing two. Yeah, and that's how good time it is out there and uh, now the uh, GDC goes from home with Oaks. Yeah, right with the second car and a spin for the other master, oh dear. Ollie Jarvis has been turned around and he's trying to get out of harm's way. No further action, NFA, no further action for that contact in the racing incident. And do you know what? I could have argued all three outcomes there. And I think given that, that was a good call to have no call. I'm sure Harry won't see it that way. Here comes Felipe Nasser down the inside of Simpson. Too easy. Simpson this time being very fair in the 84 JDC Miller Ford Sport car. Gave room on the inside. Behind his teammate is now having a look as well in the 85. The 10 car. In the 
Bit late, Jordan Taylor, that was side-by-side -side contact. And remember, they, they'd already had contact with the wall earlier on. Shea Adam is looking at another battered and bruised Cadillac. They were up on the wall, ready for this car to come in. They're taking the tape off, and they're going to put a new tire rear cluster on this car because the uh, cheese wedge, as it disappeared, then made more damage to the rest of the car. So that rear section of the car, which was actually taped on, they've had to pull the tape off, and now they are ripping the old one off, making sure that everything underneath it is okay before they go ahead and put the new tail on. And uh, there was contact after that as well, to be honest, Shea, so that might have, uh, that might have also dislodged something. Great battle going on at the head of the field for second, third, fourth, and fifth as Ollie Jarvis comes into the pit lane for Mazda. They're checking the back of the car. It's going up on the air jacks. The right rear seems to be the area of most concern as there's a mechanic around the left side now holding that wheel as well. But they are running around to the right rear. Oh, the engine has gone off. This day for Mazda has gone from what looked promising to terrible. That game was a car that was facing the wrong direction. That would suggest to me that there'd been a hit. Yes, there was. It was a number five car that is in the hands of Philippe Albuquerque. That is under review as well. And that could be two Mazdas out with contact. They will not be happy. And Ollie Jarvis has refired and left the pit lane. And has lost the lead lap, however, having recovered the car. Now, down the inside on the long back straight section, JDC Miller Motorsport car is going by. That's not a pass for position, though, because that is the Conington Minolta number 10 Cadillac getting back up to speed in the hands of Jordan Taylor. He's on an outlap here as they stream through. He is now a lap down. Simpson and Fortier go through, Colin Brown go through. It's Cameron that leads by two and a half seconds for Acura. His teammate Ricky Taylor is second, six from seven. Then Felipe Nasa in third in the first of the Cadillacs. Then Stephen Simpson racing, prepared to get his elbows out. He's about uh, three quarters of a second ahead of his teammate Tristan Vautier, the second of those bright yellow JDC cars. Then Colin Brown's a second further back in GTD. Lexus still leads. Hawksworth from Pat Long in second for Porsche, 14 from 73 from 12, with Townsend Bell in third position and still Catherine Legg in the 57 Acura in fourth position. That's a Cadillac in race update with Cadillac V Series. Which will this is never take time off. There's a pass from position going through the far side of the circuit, in fact, coming back onto the front straight area. And that is Felipe Nassi going into second place over Ricky Taylor. Ricky Taylor in that Acura, just struggling at the moment, doesn't have the pace of his teammates. So now Nasser is released, Jeremy, and immediately pulls, what, four or five cars lengths, and it'll be Stephen Simpson, the next car, to challenge the Acura. Well, Cadillac have never been beaten on the streets here in the current era of the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship. Corvette 2012 to 16, and then from 17 onwards, it's been Cadillac. They are unbeaten here, and they have got 2.2 seconds to make up with Philippe Nasser in a very quick number 31 wheeling car on Dean Cameron ahead. This is going to be really interesting. There's also a passing position on that number five car. got past the... Uh, and it didn't get past number 54. I thought it had done. It's certainly very, very close between those two. Some battling all the way up and down the field, but uh, Jack Hawksworth, he's kind of checking out there in GTD. And it's looking at the moment, so we've got the same two winners for the most recent race out in front at Mid-Ohio, out in front here as well. Let's go back down to Shea Adam. Real disappointment down at Mazda. Their dear, well, okay, they've got Ollie back out there, but their dear has gone really sour very quickly. It really did. For the faces at Mazda, though, they're not giving up with the 77 still out. They're still learning more, and they will take that forward towards Watkins Glen, where they had a test not too long ago. They will be doing testing in the month between the two races. So the Mazda that we've seen today on the streets of Belle Isle, not necessarily the same Mazda that we will see at the end of June. OK, they've got a little bit of time. Thank you, Shea. Shea Adam down in the pit lane for us here should have nothing else to do other than interview the winners when they come back. No pit stops uh, planned. 
the number 31 car is really close. Nasser's got the bit between his teeth. Yeah, yeah. We've still got 50 minutes remaining in this race. The, the, the pace of the leader, he's probably just managing himself at this stage, I'm sure, but 123.4 is um, well within that car's capabilities, that's for sure. Stephen Simpson closing right up to the back of the number seven. Acura of Ricky Taylor is there. Come through to the latter part of the lap. The leader passes us now. Then goes NASA. Now that battle for third, fourth, and fifth. Colin Brown's not out of this either. In the Nissan, oh, that's yeah. a fast car in Colin's hands. It is, but it lost a lot of ground. It stuck behind number 10 car. When number 10 car came out of the pits, he was right with this train of the uh, the second of the Akron Chip Penske's and a two JDC Miller Cadillacs and he's lost quite a lot of ground he's uh, he's about about three seconds behind that little train of cars dicing for third place park place in the dark grey Porsche still leading GT Daytona uh, excuse me still second in GT Daytona by about a second and a half and has a second on the Lexus it's Lexus first and third 14 Jack Hawksworth then the 73 Pat Long Porsche then the 12 Lexus of Townsend Bell, then Catherine Legg, about half a second back. And Catherine is the car on the move at the moment, starting to put some pressure uh, on the back of the second of the Lexus, Townsend Bell, who is in a podium position. Then it's Bill Orbelin, and he's only another three quarters of a second back in the 96, the blue and yellow BMW M6. So this is all still to play for for podiums in the GT Daytona. Remember, this is round two of the Sprint Series for GT Daytona. Mid-Ohio, last time out, was the opening round. I'm watching the sky as well. There's a bit of yellow in the sky off to the distance. That often means bad weather is on the way, but I think we're going to be all right. No further action for the 5 and 77. So both masters, they're going to think they're on. Really, did they break? a mirror on top of a black cat whilst they were standing on cracks in the pavement walking under a ladder today <laughs> because that's both of their cars that have had contact not necessarily initiated by themselves and ended up with problems that have taken them out of contention park place porsche <laughs> and pat long not letting jack hawksworth get away and we know no. hawksworth only took left side tires and we know how difficult it is to keep the rear tyres underneath that Lexus. Now, degrading isn't too bad here. Tyres don't wear too badly, but Hawksworth will have to have to manage that. He will, and, and he's, he, he'll be making sure at this stage he doesn't push too hard, because he wants to make sure he's got some tyres left at the end of this race in case there's another full course caution. We have a, a one or two lap shootout to the end. He's not going to push too hard. He doesn't need to extend that lead anymore. He's pretty comfortable right now at around about a second or 1.3 as it was they came across the line last time around. So he'll be uh, pretty happy with that right now. Meanwhile, the leaders uh, is upping, the, upping its pace now is, is uh, Dane Campbell. In fact, he just turned the fastest lap of the race. Yeah, 24.459 having said that he's right behind him Philippe that's yes. not even faster yeah he held it for all of 1.1 seconds exactly Jeremy. Right. Uh, 121.2 now that's a very very good time as we're heading into the last 10 minutes of the race and there's, st there's still battles everywhere on the track at the moment so we're not going to start writing our race reports yet over there in the casino Hello to all of our hard-working journalists, by the way. Don't get to see too much of you this weekend uh, because of the distance between us and us being on the outside of the circuit. Battle for the lead. It is, it's a real battle, this, Jeremy. Well, And they're trading literally tenths of seconds. If they were side by side, they would be literally rubbing rear-view mirrors at the moment. But I think NASA is... Uh, is Maybe just got a slightly better car underneath him, but yeah. it's it's marginal. Yeah, it is. And each of the last two laps has been he's been 0.2 of a second quicker than the race leader. Each of the last three, four laps actually, two tenths of a second quicker. That gap now down to just over a second it was last time around. I think it might have equalised this time. The thing is that number seven car of Ricky Taylor's lost a lot of ground. The new fastest lap of the race this time it is by our race leader Dane Cameron. 120.949 for our race leader. He's absolutely put the hammer down now. Temperature has dropped, the wind's starting to get up as well, Sheer Adam. 
Uh, that is uh, normally the sign that weather's coming in, but we've only got 10 minutes here. My goodness, it could be a real scramble <laughs> at the end if we get a big splash. Well, normally the winner is the only one who gets wet because they get to jump in the fountain. Yeah, that could be a little bit interesting. Um, it, it has gotten cooler. Now that you mentioned it, I'm not sweating as much as I was a few minutes ago. So yeah, the sky behind you, John, I'm really glad that you can't see it because it really is a dark little ring cloud over your head. Okay. If Nick Damon was here, he'd be bursting into the Winnie the Pooh, so thankfully he's not in the court. At just under 10 minutes. Any little mistake, and there's traffic not too far up the road here for the leader, and the first guy's going to have to deal with is the McLaren 720, Paul Holton, behind that McLaren steering wheel, the bright orange, black and grey car. It's absolutely brilliant. The Lark McLaren Tribute Liberty. It's managed to get through. The leader has passed. Second place car is passed. Yeah, and I think there was just a little marginal advantage for NASA there. Richard Meal come on board uh, that uh, Mercedes team for this weekend and for the rest of the season. That's a further in that uh, Compass Racing team's hat. Yeah, for that McLaren. Meal <laughs> somewhere. There's been an incident as. Yes, it's Catherine, it's Catherine Legg. Catherine Legg, I've heard the squeal of Michelin tyres. I saw a little bit of carbon fibre in the air. And Catherine Legg has spun around. She's going to get it pointed back in the right direction. Meantime, the leaders are almost together, going past the AMG Mercedes of Lone Star Racing and the number eight, number eight of Starworks, currently in the hands of Ryan DL. The lead is together now, Jeremy, and there's the odd spot of rain on the lenses of the onboard cameras. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And what, eight minutes remaining. Super job being doing by, done by our TV crew, by the way, to keep the pictures going, because we're now hearing there's lightning in the area, and several of the cameramen have been asked to stand down for safety reasons. So we've got none of the high cameras up at the moment, but still great coverage of the race on IMSA Radio and IMSA TV. Well done to our TV partners and our colleagues over there at the TV compound. Leaders caught up in traffic. 96 and 57 came together. So that was Bill Orbelin that had the tangle with Catherine Legg. And now it looks like Forza Motorsport out there with the leaders pushing their way left, right, trying to get through the traffic. It's like you're on a challenge. One of those five lap dashes where you've got to pick your way through as many as you can. And we've probably got somewhere in the region of that to go. Five, possibly six laps, depending on when they cut the line. And now Dan Cameron's had a huge advantage as he pulls out. Orbelin and the Catherine Leg incident. Bill Orbelin diving down the inside. I'm afraid that's going to be a bit easier to call. Down, down the inside at five, isn't it, that? And uh, close enough. don't think he was quite close enough there. But that's not my decision, thank goodness. Would you like a job in race control, Heidoff? <laughs> no, absolutely not. Thank you very much. Leaders together again as, once again, one this of the... This is where the 31 car's been strong, but... Uh, <laughs> ...the camera to say ahead into turn 12. Lexus just slowing down the leading Acura, not by in any means deliberately through they go past us again and they're right in traffic now Stephen Simpson tra still trying to make a, a move on Ricky Taylor as well for the final podium position in DPR it's still Jack Hawksworth who leads in GTD gets the two leading DPIs go through six minutes to go edge of the seat stuff this little bit untidy a little bit stop start in the early part of our 100 minutes of the Chevrolet Sports Car Classic here at the Raceway on Belle Isle. But now it's come to life, and now we have a battle for the lead. This is marvellous stuff again, Jeremy. Can we have another hour of this, please? Yeah, well, we'll have uh, another, what, five oh. hours more of it at, uh, at Watkins Glen in a few weeks' time. Six Point. hours of the Glen. Yeah, the sale in six eight hours of the Glen. A mistake there. Mistake. Oh. Oh. Nasser cost himself a fair bit of time at turn seven, just missed his turning point there, and it's cost Easy him probably do. a second. Easy to do. Probably the better part of a second and a half there, Jeremy. Yeah, you're right. So easy to do, but it shows just how much pressure is on board of these drivers. 
often said that it's easier to chase than to lead. Acura really leaps off the corner, it doesn't it? It does punch oh, away very nicely. Which is interesting, this generally it's the Cadillac with its uh, V8 power plant that's able to jump off the corner, so show really, really good traction. Cadillacs are the heaviest cars out there. They have been pegged back a bit with the balance of performance. NASA, though, don't tell NASA that. All he can see is a white car ahead of him that he wants to chase down. Missed his breaking point by a fraction and just locked just the right, up, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, left front rather, Michelin. Did well actually to keep the car, came straight off the brakes, got the car turned in, balanced himself, took a deep breath and thought, right, I'm not going to try and push that that next time. It's really interesting that Ricky Taylor's really struggling in that third place car. He's fallen nearly seven seconds behind and he'd been falling back at a rate of well, a good half a second a lap prior to, you know, well, really, basically, since we were back to green again, so he's not got up to speed in the same way that Dane Cameron has. Don't forget, we want your questions and points arising, anything that you've seen that you want to talk about. Hashtag Michelin, PRT, please, too, at IMSA Radio. And we'll... Keep an eye on this lead battle for the next four minutes or so. Pretty static in the Hawksworth long run. I see that. And uh, it's gone out to two seconds, so Hawksworth really pushing on there. Townsend Bell now has Bill Oberlin for company, but that's another 1.8 seconds further back, that BMW. So it's all looking relatively quiet in GTD, and another mistake by Felipe Nazic is going wide. He's now struggling to get that car. I wonder if he's flat spotted one of the tyres, Jeremy, and he's just getting a little bit of a trouble on braking and turning in. Nasser doesn't know the meaning of the word settle for second, though, the phrase settle for second, does he? No, he's certainly pushing hard. Both of the leaders last time around, uh, 1 minute 21.1. That's inside the old lap record from last year by half a second, but the quickest lap of the race was turned by Dane Cameron uh, five laps ago at 120. Point nine. So that last lap within a couple of tenths of a second of that. So they're certainly pushing hard, these two, at this stage. But I'm impressed particularly by the, the fact that the Acura at this stage is able to keep its Michelin tyres underneath it. That's been one of the cars' Achilles heels this season. They've been struggling the later part of the stint. The, the Cadillac seem to look after their tyres a little bit better than the Acura. But at this stage, Dane Cameron is, uh, has really kept those Michelins in great shape. Meantime, in the Daytona prototype battle, Colin Brown has his hands full with Philippe Albuquerque. They were going side by side down to turn three a moment or two ago. And Albuquerque has got through. So that's a new sixth position for Philippe Albuquerque. Colin Brown slips back to sixth. Tristan Vortier turns his car's fastest lap of the race last time around, as does the second place car of Philippe Nasser. And it's down to 1.2 seconds again. So Nasser comes again. You can't knock him down. I think there's just enough for Cameron, so long as he doesn't make any mistakes. The Cadillac just not getting off the corners. Turn of BMW, I didn't see it come past. Uh, BMW, turn of BMW stopped, has stopped. Bill Oberlin is out on the circuit somewhere, so has he gone down an, est an escape road? Good spot by Jeremy Shaw. That car was right up in the top six in GTD, Lexus, Porsche, Lexus, and then the two Lamborghinis then in fourth and fifth position. That last lap by Felipe Nasser, only three hundredths of a second away from Dane Cameron's fastest lap of the race with, it'll be, it'll be white flag, won't it? I think coming past now, is it? Yes, it is. White flag. White flag is in the air as they go through and now down into turn one. Less than a second between them. Question. Is any traffic going to play a part? I don't think so. And a new fastest lap there was again there for Felipe Nasser. <laughs> 120.923. No point for the fastest lap here. But Nasser flashing his lights. He's trying to take the attention of the leader, Dan Cameron. Three quarters of a lap to go. They head through the Parkland area of Belle Isle, the Chevrolet Sports Car Classic, delivering again. And Nasser closes in as they head onto the strand with the river to their left hand side the body of water on the right the inland 
part of the or the lake part of the island here now into turn seven round the fountain that's where we'll have our podium ceremonies nasa's not giving up he's got a little bit of understeer in that car he just can't get the car turned into the apex it's pushing away from it but he's managing that he's within a couple of cars lengths here it'll be a drag race to the line but surely cameron's got enough in that acura it's been punching off the corners very well indeed so long as he doesn't hit the wall on the outside of turn 13 which he does not and goes across the checkered flag is out and the win goes to acura two in a row for penske acura and the cadillac stranglehold here on belle isle is broken Montoya doing his part early on, and Dan Cameron bringing it home. Fastest lap for Felipe Nasser in second, and Ricky Taylor makes it a 1-3 for Acura as the rain starts to fall in GT Daytona. The leaders are coming through the fountain section now, and Pat Long gets a run out onto the Riverside again, trying to chase down Hawksworth, but Hawksworth surely has got this one won as well. Good run in second for the park place car. Patrick Lindsay flying a whole load of drivers to Le Mans for the test day tomorrow, and it will be the number 12 Lexus RCF GT3 from Ian Sullivan that will come through and take GT3 from Porsche. It's a 1-3 in both classes. Lexus in GTD and Acura in prototype. Let's go to our DPI winners, Acura and Juan Montoya. He's with Chip. Juan, this is two races in a row for you guys in the number six, and the streak continues for Mr. Penske. How does this feel? Uh, it's good. It's, I mean, to win in Detroit, finally, <laughs> you know, it's good. It's it's nice to be here. It's nice, you know, to be with Acura. It's an amazing program, and Team Penske, and Roger's home race, and, you know, I felt yesterday I did a really good job in qualifying, and to convert that into a win, you know, they did an amazing job out there as well. So it was, we did everything we needed to do again. So it's just got to keep doing that every week. Congrats. Thank you. Uh, that car, the number six, Shea, it's been an awesome month of <laughs> May and we're calling this the 32nd of May yeah. uh, because of that, because the drivers in the number six for Penske's have done great work this 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 uh, this month. I really like what Juan said in the countdown to green that uh, this was just a good start to the month of June because he's already thinking about the six hours of the Glen that comes up in about four weeks time. But yeah, for Mr. Penske's number six drivers, including Mr. Simon Pagino, who's the extra driver when we get to the long endurance races, they are undefeated and takes that win jeremy shaw unofficially takes the number six crew to within a point of the championship lead yeah i reckon so uh, it's uh, this is the first repeat win of the uh... oh, i beg your pardon wait a minute scratch that uh, i beg your pardon uh, because it was uh, i got my numbers wrong there the it, the they certainly close up a little bit now but uh, 152 points for the uh number 31 team and it'll be 147 now right. for the number uh, seven team so yeah my apologies on that one number six team of the Cameron and Montoya because they were in fourth position coming in here well you do the arithmetic while Shea Adam brings us into the driver well Richard Highstand, there's a tradition here. When you win in Detroit, you get to go jump in the fountain and get wet. It's raining already, but the good news is you still get to go in the fountain. You know what? I'm going to leave that to Jack. He's the one that really won the race this time. I didn't feel like I did a whole lot, uh, but since he won it, I'm going to have him jump in the fountain. I'll just watch. You can push him in. Yeah, How hard? In. Yeah, yeah, that's good. I'll do How that. badly did you guys want this second win? Yeah, I mean, I wanted it. I didn't, I didn't, to be honest, we didn't have the fastest car. I didn't think we were going to win, but I was talking to Jack earlier. He goes, you know, man, I got a feeling. I think we're going to win today. And I looked at him. He goes, yeah, I don't know how we're going to win, but I think we're going to win. And, and you know, we did. I actually went out to the corner to watch, and then he was in first place. So I didn't see the pass. I'm going to have to go watch it on TV. But he did, obviously did an amazing job. Congrats. Thank you very much. Just high stand there. Uh, teammates to Jack Hawks with winners in the GT Daytona category. Yeah, in the Manufacturers' Championship now, it's just one point between Cadillac there you go. And, and Acura, so uh, sort of right. <laughs> well, our Porsche keys to the race, the weather didn't play a part, track position certainly did. Uh, and uh, the tyre situation with all of the yellows really didn't play out. It was, a, it was a bit of a frustrating race earlier on there, Jeremy. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? But it, it certainly uh, made up for that in the latter stages. Tremendous run by both of these two. Uh, Cameron trying to do 
do his best uh, just to kind of manage the pace there uh, until in the final stages he had to step it up and because he'd managed his pace in the early part of that stint I think that's what enabled him to have really good tyres at the end there and able to hold off that uh, charging Cadillac behind him a really really finely judged win there for Dane Cameron and Juan Pablo Montoya great weekend for that team yeah fabulous stuff Dane Cameron and Juan Montoya uh, richly deserving the applause down at the fountain for the victory lane ceremonies so confirmation then that the Chevrolet sports car classic is won by Acura team Penske Dane Cameron and Juan Montoya at the end it was eight tenths of a second fastest lap of the race and second position for the 31 team of Felipe Nazar and Pipo Durrani for the wheel and engineering crew and yes and, and that, that, that won't do much good for, for Cadillac's hopes of trying to get a balanced performance adjustment in their favor uh, because although this this is a sort of track that certainly should suit, should suit that car with its torque coming off the corners but as we saw there in the closing stages it was a torque of that that uh, Acura particularly off turn 11 uh, because uh, turn 12 into turn 12 that's where number 31 card made several passes during this race but he wasn't able to get even close to Cameron in the closing stages and GT Daytona on the podium two Lexus and a Porsche first and third for Lexus and the 14 yeah. car gets the repeat win eight tenths of a second there actually almost the identical gap 0.828 there it was 0.820 in DPI uh, Townsend Bell fighting off a number of cars to hold on to third position there. He'll be pleased with that. From Andy Lally in fourth position, that's always the unluckiest place, isn't it? Brian Sellers fighting back after an early incident for the 48 Paul Miller racing Lamborghini. So the two Lamborghinis, fourth and fifth in the top six, made up by the Audi. Ryan DL virtually carrying that car and uh, hustling it up to uh, sixth position for the number eight Starworks car coming up next we will have our michelin post race tech thank you very much to Shea adam so stay tuned to imsa radio if you're here at the track you'll hear tony laporta and the formalities which i'm sure they'll want to get started as quickly as possible with the weather going in so we'll hand back the pa to them just as we do that remind you that tomorrow it is the le mans test day many of these drivers will be there representing imsa as well as our gt le mans drivers as well rs1 uh, from early morning it's a nine o'clock start Central European time. Hope you can join us for that. And we'll see you at Watkins Glen in a month's time for the next IMSA race. Bye-bye for now.